Hello my classy people, Wayne Bolden. It is Wednesday, it is hump day. We are about three days out from Breeders' Cup Friday, Future Star Friday for sure. And as always, our tip sheets are available. I want to thank everyone that's purchased them up to this point. Quite a few orders in. Great, great way to support us, to keep us on the air. Hey, Friday is 20 bucks, full card analysis and picks. Saturday, 20 bucks. Please email us at speedking24 at yahoo.com and or text the office 732-804-0637. Well, I want to do one more Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, race uh, on Friday. Uh, like this race, race number seven on the card, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. You know, the girls are back in town. You know how I feel about the girls. It's a great one, of course. It's $2 million. You got a full field of 10. I'm going to dive right in to the number three horse. Well, well, well. It is so immersive, right? Trained by Brad Cox. Manny Franco's in the arms. And this filly is by Nykris. That's right. The Derby went in Nykris. I believe Doug O'Neill was the trainer for that one. On the back end by the old timer, the grandfather's Bernardini. This one is bred very, very well. The number three horse immersive is installed at three to two for sure, which is the co-favorite in this race. But to me, this one's going to be just keep continuing her work. Obviously, Obviously, she's bred known by who? You got it. It's Godolphin, right? Manny Franco has done a great, great job with this one. Won the Alcibiade on October 4th at beautiful Keeneland at 8 to 5. Okay, and uh, 3 to 1 seems like a gift to me. And this one just continues to improve in each of the three starts, which is what you expect. Love the post position, shouldn't lose any ground, has enough speed to be forwardly placed. And if you ever see this one on the lead, if she gets to the front, it's going to be very, very hard to catch her. She doesn't typically go to the front, but I think she has a chance to break to the front here. There's a couple horses in here with some speed, but they look a little sluggish. The pace numbers on Immersive, the Godolphin runner, Brad Cox and his band of merry horses, right? Yeah, Immersive is going to be very, very tough. I expect uh, Godolphin to have a big, big weekend. Uh, for sure, none bigger than this one, Immersive. And, of course, in the Juvenile on Saturday, uh, they have East, East Avenue, who is my best bet. But this one isn't far behind. I think this horse should be able to uh, break clean, uh, sit in the catbird seat second or third, and go by them. Now, like I said, if she breaks and she gets to the lead, this race is over. That's what I just said. She did, she's never been on the front end. But according to my pace numbers in my database, if this, you know, if this horse ever gets to the front end by the quarter pole, they're not catching her. So the number three is my top pick in the juvenile Philly race, race number seven on Friday. Our second pick, well, here's your favorite in the race, Scottish Lassie. Well, hey, listen, Abreu is our trainer. Hey, there's Jose Lascano. I like Jose Lascano. Do a lot of riding for Linda Rice obviously up there in New York. At 5-2, to two, the number 10 horse. Got beautiful, beautiful speed figures. Uh, is forwardly placed. I hate the 10 posts. Uh, anything outside the 7 or 8 posts, I hate, particularly around two turns. Uh, this one, if this one again, just like the Chad Brown horse, that McPatrick horse, right? Okay, if this horse get caught two or three wide into that first turn, this horse, not good enough to you know, I'm not, I don't know how much this horse is going to improve, but you don't want to lose ground. The enemy to horse racing is ground loss. Why? you got to travel more ground. Okay, so the 10 post is really what makes me hesitant on Scottish Lassie, but she is very, very good. Her speed figures are fair. Her pace numbers are good. I hate the post. I don't think she's as good as Immersive, but you do have to put a little respect on her name. She ended up winning the uh, Frizette Stakes Grade 1 up there at Belmont at Aqueduct with Lascano in the arms. She broke her maiden uh, back there in September at, at Saratoga. Uh, no, actually, she broke her maiden in a Grade 1 Frizette Stakes, right? Uh, her first start ever, she only has two starts, one win and two seconds. 
Uh, she ran third in the maiden, but they loved her so much, they put her right into the gray one for Zets and got six to one, and she won that race by nine lengths, right? And um, beating a horse in here, the number two horse, uh, show it, show it, show it, right? So the number 10 is our second pick. Our third pick, here's a horse that I think should be in mid-pack. The number seven, non-compliant. Well, non-compliant uh, um, is by Tis the Law uh, on the back end by Street Sense for sure. In this one, number seven is undefeated. Two starts, two wins, right? Uh, nine to two on the morning line. Bobby Baffert is doing the training. Juan Hernandez is up. They're at their home track. The number seven probably should have a long, strong look because, again, they have home court advantage. This horse has broke the maiden on August 31st across Del Mar, went to Saratoga, Saratoga went to Santa Anita on October 5th, won an overnight grade two stake race, uh, which was the Oak Leaf Stakes. And now back in 27 days, about four weeks, that is absolutely perfect. Everything that Juan Hernandez sit on turns to gold. He is the leading rider out there. He's the one that ran Flavian Pratt out of town. No, you did not just said it. Juan Hernandez. So you ought to always have to pay attention uh, when you handicap out there. The first thing to do is find where Juan Hernandez is. Of course, the chances are that his horse is alive. Not that he's going to win every race, but if he's in the race, you he probably had his pick of the litter. Okay? There ain't no doubt about that. So you know his horse is alive, and you you got to give the number seven non-compliant uh, a, a chance to, to do it because Bob Baffert is home, Juan Hernandez is home. This horse is a horse for the course. The number and nine to two is not a bad price on the number seven horse for sure. And then we round out our super factor. Our fourth pick is Quick Kick at ten to one. Let's use this one underneath Tommy Amos, the sneaky, sneaky Tommy Amos, right? Who's a very, very good trainer. He did run second uh, behind uh, the Godolphin runner in the Alcibiade. Ran second to Immersive last time. Dylan Davis is in the arms. He's made the trip out here to California to ride this one and uh, again let's use the number five horse underneath at 10 to 1 on their way to 15 to 1. So there it is in the juvenile Philly. Once again we believe that uh, Godolphin is sitting on a huge huge weekend. None bigger than the juvenile on Saturday. The two year old boys right with East, East Avenue but hey the juvenile Phillies they mean business here too. Immersive. Brad Cox and his band of horses. Manny Franco, three for three for sure. Alcibiade winner four weeks back. Looks like the horse is going to get a beautiful trip. And I say, if the gate opens, and this horse has never been on a lead, but according to my database, right, my personal database, because I do pace numbers, if this horse gets to the front, they're not beating that horse. That's a fact. But either way, the number three is our top pick. Our second pick is Scottish Lassie on the outside. Very, very nice horse. We'll have to improve. I hate the post position because this horse has enough speed to just get out fourth or fifth and be three or four wide in the first turn. That's not good. The enemy to horse racing is ground loss. Okay? Don't ever forget that. But we still made Scottish Lassie our second pick. Our third pick is the hometown boys. Hey, Bobby Baffert and Juan Hernandez with the number seven non-compliant for sure. And we round out our super with Quick Kick to be coming down with Tommy Amos. Picking them up. Completing the trial of the super force. So for us, the three, I'm all in. Three, Immersive, the Godolphin runner. Ten, seven, five. Go ahead and box it up. Me? I'm not doing that. I'm single and immersive, just like that. One of our best bets for sure. This horse will be my single in this year's pick five, for sure. Oh, yeah. It's only five races. So in the middle of my pick five, immersive will be my single. Race number seven. Okay, in the, <laughs> on Friday, right? So the pick five is race six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Race number seven, I got a single. That's a fact. Stay classy, y'all. It's all about the number three horse, Immersive. It is a Godolphin runner. They mean business. Don't be shocked if they win three of them. 
My name is Wayne Bolden. I'm your speed king, of course.